Welcome to Metamorphosis on Imaging and QC. I'll be giving you a basic overview of best practices and standards in digital imaging as they pertain to NDMP. This information will help you evaluate or QC your digital images, whether you're scanning your film in-house or sending it off to a vendor. Keep in mind the quality of your digital images will greatly be determined by the quality of your source microfilm. It doesn't matter if you're scanning the film yourself or receiving your scans from a vendor, one of the first things you'll want to do is to make sure you're meeting the NDMP standards. Are your files the right format, bit depth, and resolution? Of course, none of these things have anything to do with looking at the actual image. You'll find this info in the file's metadata. For file format, you'll want an uncompressed TIFF version 6. TIFFs are considered the accepted format for archival images because they are universally supported by image editing software and they can hold metadata. And TIFF images are usually of higher quality due to the absence of artifacts created by file compression. Bit depth refers to the number of unique colors, or bits, used to indicate the color of a pixel in an image. There are three basic types, bitonal, grayscale, and color. Bitonal images are considered one bit. In a bitonal image, a pixel is represented as either being black or white. Because of this, bitonals have a small file size, making them quicker to scan and transfer, and they take up less storage. They provide high contrast, clean images for OCR, but there is a downside. Because the pixels are basically considered black or white, there is a great potential for loss of detail. Grayscale is an 8-bit image, where the pixels are represented by one of 256 different shades of gray. A grayscale image will display greater detail than a bitonal image, which can be very beneficial for documents from film with poor legibility. But with all the additional tonality comes a larger file size and an additional element to factor in during QC in terms of brightness and contrast. Here's some examples of bitonal versus grayscale images from the same source microfilm. Notice the loss of detail in the bitonal image, particularly in the illustration. Also note how the bitonal affects the text. Some letters appear blocked up, while others are incomplete. Ultimately, this will reduce the accuracy of your OCR. Color images combine the 8-bit information of the image captured in one of three color channels, red, green, and blue, making them a 24-bit file depth. Color images produce the most accurate visual representation of a document or artifact and are preferred when the element of color is important to the interpretation of its content. However, color files are three times larger than their grayscale counterparts, which makes working with them a slower process and the need for storage greater. Color space, color management, and device calibration are all additional QC concerns that come into play when scanning in color. All of these factors need to be taken into consideration for any digitization project, but for the purposes of NDMP, 8-bit grayscale is the bit depth standard. Now let's consider resolution. NDMP stipulates that images should be 300 or 400 dpi. Your metadata may say you have 300 or 400 dpi, but don't assume that it is correct. You should be double checking that your scanner or vendor is giving you a true DPI. A true DPI is where the digital dimensions of an image equal the physical dimensions of the newspaper. It is an uninterpolated value and it greatly depends on the reduction ratio used at the time the paper was filmed and the size of the image sensor on the scanning device. A vendor may claim that they can capture resolutions higher than 400 DPI, but oftentimes this resolution is an interpolated DPI and not a true resolution. Interpolated DPI is a method of constructing new data mathematically by sampling other parts of the image rather than recording the data from a sensor. Interpolated DPIs are not part of the NDMP specifications. This is why you need to know the true DPI for your images. If there are no targets listing the reduction ratio, you may have to consult the errors guide for the paper's physical dimension and do a little mathematics to determine if you're getting a true DPI. Oftentimes, papers filmed at a high reduction ratio, like 20 times or higher, is extremely difficult to achieve this true resolution spec. And now the bonus round! Ah! Hey Crystal, how do I figure the reduction ratio if I don't have a target or a scanner? Excellent question! First take the measurement of an actual newspaper page using the errors guide or some similar resource to find the dimensions. For example, 17 by 23 inches.
Once your technical specs are met, it's time to actually look at your images and evaluate their quality. First, look to see that they are all the correct orientation, right side up, text reading left to right. Make sure images show all of their page edges with the appearance of a quarter inch border on all four sides after they have been cropped and deskewed. Make sure pages have been deskewed correctly. It's not uncommon to have pages where the text was printed crooked on the paper. You'll want to make sure the pages were deskewed using the text as the reference, not the edge of the page. This is for the benefit of more accurate OCR. Most scanning software uses some sort of auto function to detect the edge of a page on a piece of film. Papers filmed against a light colored camera bed or in a 2B orientation can sometimes throw off this auto detection. Double check that the pages were captured correctly and make sure all pages are split, properly deskewed, and that all borders are showing. There is one exception to splitting pages. Where pages, such as grocery store ads, span two pages, it's okay to present both pages as a single image if they were filmed that way. Then you'll want to make sure your images have sufficient brightness, contrast, and even lighting. If your images appear too light or too dark, you may want to check your image's histogram to make sure that the highlight and the shadow detail hasn't been lost. A good looking image will be in focus, have good contrast, even lighting across the page, and has been exposed in such a way that the base of the microfilm does not detract from the image. Here's an example of a less than stellar image. Notice the lack of contrast, which results in loss of detail and making the text much less legible. You'll want to view your images at a one-to-one -one or actual pixel view for more critical evaluations. Here you can double check focus. If your images are not in focus, you'll want to take another look at your film to determine if it's the result of poor microfilming or if it's an issue with scanning. As much as you want to check that your images are in focus, you'll also want to make sure that they haven't been digitally sharpened. Sharpening is a process that effectively increases the contrast where the lightest and the darkest pixels meet. Sharpening can be done at varying degrees depending on an image's intended use. Over sharpening can result in digital artifacts that negatively affect image quality. Therefore, sharpening is not considered to be an appropriate practice for archival images. Splice. Now would be a good time to talk about splices because they can cause trouble with your image focus. A zipper splice often acts like a speed bump along the surface of the microfilm. As the film passes over the scanner sensor, this bump raises the film, shortening the distance between it and the lens and potentially throwing that part of the film out of focus. This can be a problem if the splice is positioned in the middle of a page. An improperly placed splice can also present other issues such as obscuring text or throwing off auto detection for page borders. This brings up a good point to keep in mind when evaluating your scans. Be aware of any physical characteristics in your microfilm or even the newspaper that could present less than perfect images or affect your OCR. Know in advance the situations you might encounter. You could be dealing with fragmented pages. Your film might have scratches, dust, or processor marks. If your film hasn't been stored properly, you could be faced with silvering, redox, ferrotyping, or emulsion separation. All of these things could affect the quality of your images, and while there's not much that can be done to correct these problems in the archival images, knowing these issues in advance will greatly aid you in the QC of your images. Film created before the implementation of modern microfilming standards often presents more challenges when it comes to scanning. Just remember this, the quality of your digital image is greatly dependent on the quality of your source. Oh yeah, and don't panic.